Hi, welcome along to another video. This time I'm going to go over a couple of things to do with introducing weather and climate modification regulation into effect in the UK. I'll give a quick recap on how we got up to now and then go into a bit more depth as to where we are right now with that. The UK, unlike Australia, America, Canada and other countries, doesn't have any regulation to monitor or govern or regulate weather and climate modification activities. So around 2015 a few of us called for a ban on geoengineering. This was a symbolic win for a collective of people as the petition with 5,000 signatures calling for a ban on it was handed into Downing Street, London. Obviously that would be highly unlikely that they would turn around and then say yeah okay we'll stop all that then and further attempts were made by people at offices such as DEFRA the Department for Environment, Food and Rural Affairs in London calling for a ban to it calling for them just to look into it investigate the subject so one of the side angles or the only side angle I can think of from that is then if you can't get it banned get regulation introduced so that the public everywhere get notified everywhere because it's the law and then there is the opportunity for people to say we don't want this stop it now which we currently don't have in the UK so getting regulation introduced means a certain process needs to be followed including evidence so based on the American version of a white paper that was being put forward over there to do with regulation that was then translated into a workable UK version and we started approaching various offices politicians to get that introduced every no or every refusal would serve to show that the government was avoiding introducing regulation on this subject or even dealing with it the various political offices said no there were lots of no's along the way which got to the point along with evidence of when it's happened when weather and climate modification has happened and what's going on nowadays and where things stand that the law commission could be approached to see if they could do anything about it themselves now the law commission was set up in 1965 in the uk as a means to keep an eye on government and to make them introduce regulation or update regulation if it was necessary so if the government failed to act the law commission was set up to make them act pure and simply it should know what needs up updating because it's outdated or they should know what needs introducing due to new technologies new activities or new national or global situations now we know some form of weather modification was carried out from 1949 in the UK. So there are 16 years worth of activities before the Law Commission was set up. The Law Commission has never decided that regulation should be introduced on weather modification, even though it's been going on for quite a few years before they existed and while they existed. So this is how the politicians etc work together. What the Law Commission does now, its activities are based on if a front bench politician puts forward a white paper, the Law Commission looks at those proposals and then it's narrowed down to some proposals and they will be worked on. These reviews take place around every three years. So between them, they pick and choose what's being introduced. So after the Law Commission stated that it's basically out of their hands, it's down to politicians to tell them what law to sort out, which is completely wrong and not what they were set up for. It's not their objectives. It's the other way round. This gave rise to taking it out of the hands of politicians and Parliament where they no longer have a say in this matter. And it goes to the courts. To do the court case, there needed to be a certain amount of evidence and regular viewers of these videos will remember the experiment carried out in Bristol it was carried out in 2019 we got to hear about it in 2020 
was a concept test for the electric charge method of weather modification. It wasn't actually trying to change the weather, it was just showing is it possible via the drone to deliver an electric charge into a cloud to change the weather. The concept test worked. There were no public notifications necessary by law, but the people carrying out the experiment from the University of Bath did notify Bristol Airport and local private landowners. There were no notifications in the Bristol media or anywhere else. And to be clear, the University of Bath or the people doing the experiments have done nothing wrong in the sense of the law. They've done nothing illegal. In fact, they didn't have to speak to Bristol Airport. They didn't have to notify local landowners, but they did. This activity, along with a Freedom of Information request from the Ministry of Defence covering the 1940s through to the end of the 1990s, showed that in some form, weather modification activities have and are taking place in the UK and they are unregulated. As DEFRA states, some activities are regulated, which means not all. So some but not all activities are regulated whereas what's needed is a full standalone act of parliament covering weather and climate modification the administrative court is one level below the court of appeal and that is one level below the supreme court so currently we're at two levels below the supreme court this just like gathering the evidence and getting all the nodes together in the right places takes time the good news is the outcome of this review should be available around the end of the year, but more than likely at the beginning of next year, due to the amount of time they take. The white paper that was created a few years ago put that through a complete rewrite and upgrade before starting this court action. Rather than it being a geoengineering act, it's been changed to a weather and climate modification act and made much more UK specific even though it was very UK specific. So some notes to the court case. Is it genuine, real? Yes, it received its court seal on the 21st of July, 2022. DEFRA and the Law Commission were served with my papers as the defendants, because basically it is the Law Commission that's not doing what they're supposed to be doing and DEFRA are not doing what they're supposed to be doing. And so were some interested parties, such as Peter Kyle, Caroline Lucas, number 10 Downing Street, Baroness Evans, and a couple of other people, including the MOD, Ministry of Defence, and uh, the Met Office. So there's about 10 interested parties, just because they're all mentioned in the Statement of Facts, except Caroline Lucas, who is an interested party, just because I said so. DEFRA have responded to the court, and they've put an associated cost of just under £9,000 with it. So it's a good job I'm not going to lose this case, isn't it? So in 2016 when I started this, what's happening now is being very much done on an individual basis, mainly so that no one else can be associated with the costs involved if I lose, but also it kind of doesn't really need anyone else to work on it, it just needs someone who's capable of doing it to do it. And there aren't that many of us around, are there? Now if anything happens, the administrative court say no, we're not interested, blah blah blah, then just go straight to the High Court of Appeals and if they say no it goes to the Supreme Court. If it fails in total what it does do is establish itself in the records for the future when someone else tries to do this. It's always good to remember that maybe we're trying to do things like this court case now but if it doesn't succeed that might be the thing that really sorts it out in the future and you don't know that about your activities now it doesn't matter how badly people treat you because of what you're saying, stick with it because you might create a loud voice in someone that they never knew they had until someone told them that it was okay to say stuff or look at this or look at that. If we stop doing it, future generations aren't going to know it's available to do. So keep at it. I hope that update made sense. Um, if you have any questions, stick them in the comments section. 